Welcome to this SEO tutorial. My name is Dara and over the next 45 minutes or so I want to give you a simple and easy to understand introduction to SEO. You know I've worked with hundreds of clients across 41 different countries and the most common question I get is how do we get to the first page of Google and it's a valid question because 95% uh, 95 of the web traffic goes to the first page of Google so if you can get on the first page you're going to get a lot more visitors to your site um, which means really more customers and more money in your pocket and if you can get to the first spot on the first page you get 33 percent of all search traffic for a particular keyword so that's really why SEO is exciting and you get it for free which is brilliant as well so it's not the only source of traffic but it's a very valuable source of traffic because Customers and users are searching on the search engines every single day. And so what you really want to do is capture that traffic. So let me just show you maybe a quick example to help show, you know, the couple of key factors to get to the top of the search results and on the first page. Um, and that's really going to give an outline for the different sections that we're going to cover in the course. So I've just typed in drones to the uh, top. In, in the search box here this is a really exploding niche a lot of interesting things happening and you can see the guy who has the first organic search result here you might be wondering well how did he get to the top of the search results number one you know what his site is about is relevant to what I've typed into the search engine so I have typed in drones you can see in the title tag of the page there's drones you can see in the URL there's drones you can see in the description there's drones so Google knows that this site is about drones and so it's matching it to my search. If you look here though, you'll see that there's over 63 million other pages that are relevant to my search that have drones in there. So how does Google really decide who gets to the top? The way they decide who gets to the top is by looking at the authority of those different web pages. The way they, that they determine authority is they look at how many links are pointing to that web page. They look about how many shares is that got across the, the internet. So you can be guaranteed that this site here has a lot of other sites pointing to it, linking back to it, saying, hey, this is a great article, That's this is really interesting. And that's really how they determine who gets the top of search results. So how does that fit into this course? Well, that's why we're going to look at keyword research and selecting the best keywords for your business. You got to know what people like me are actually searching for. You want to put those keywords on your page, on page optimization. Um, and then you want to build authority to really beat your competitors and get at the top of the ranking. So you can see here in the uh, YouTube description now I've broken down the course into the different sections. Um, what I've also done to help you guys out is I have put um, time stamped hyperlinks in here. So say for example if you want to go straight through the title tag and meta description you just click here and it's bringing you straight to that section so I hope you guys uh, find that helpful here's another, another quick tip if you want to get through this course at twice the speed you can just go in here and uh, the course will play at twice the speed and get through it in half the time as well so finally you know if you find this helpful and you want to build on what you've learned here uh, I've included in the description box here a link to my premium SEO cords. So what you're seeing here on YouTube is really an extract of that. There's absolutely no obligation for you to uh, click through and unlock the additional lectures, but I have two hours of additional lectures, unlimited SEO reports, quizzes, um, and the course is over 25 star um, reviews and over 2,000 other students in there. I've also included a nice discount in those links, so if you are interested, I think it'd uh, be good to check that out. So that's really it. Let's move on to the next section now. Maybe just have a quick check in the description before you get started. Thanks very much. Great, so this is quite a short lecture, but one that's very important because it covers off on a point that I see a lot of people getting wrong. And it's really the difference between websites and web pages and the significance for SEO. So websites, you can think of them like the book and the web pages are the individual pages within that book. So your different product pages, about us pages, etc. Now that distinction seems very obvious, but it's a very important one. 
So the reason the distinction between web pages and websites is really important is because Google in the search results presents the most relevant web pages, not the most relevant websites. So as you can see, I've typed in digital cameras here and you know it's come up the actual the individual page on the Best Buy website for digital cam cameras. And you know the reason is then because this is more relevant to what I'm searching about. But I guess the point is a lot of people don't think about keyword research, they don't think about on-page optimization, they don't think about building authority for individual pages. They think about it just I want to get my website to number one in Google. So really the point that I'm making here is for the course and the materials that you're learning in it we need to think about it in terms of individual pages. It doesn't have to be every page on your website but the pages that you want to rank for you should engage all of these strategies. So up to now we've learned that keywords really are at the heart of SEO. It's what we're going to optimize on our on our site. We're going to put these keywords in the in the specific locations on our page. And then we're also going to build authority around these keywords. We're going to try and attract links back from different sites around the internet. And we're going to have these keywords in the links. So it's really is, you know, at, at the heart of, of SEO. What you've got to remember though is that when you pick a keyword you're essentially picking a fight so um, you know for example if you pick a keyword shoes you could be going up against some of the biggest retailers in the world with million dollar budgets and teams of people working on SEO so that's not a fight that you're going to win you're not going to get on the first page of Google for a keyword as specific as that so you've got to be smart you've got to have a strategy and that's really what keyword research is about. It's it's going out and looking for things that your competitors have overlooked and, and finding little gems that have good volume but are not that competitive. And that's really the name of the game. So if I've said that you're not going to be able to rank and get to the first page for a specific term like shoes, what are you going to be able to get to the first page of Google for? Um, so to help explain that, I'm going to talk about three types of keywords and um, two of these types of keywords are the ones we're really going to be focusing on. So first type of keyword is the head keyword and as we said, this is a specific one word phrase, huge amount of search volume for that and competition, um, but usually the conversion rate is, is pretty low. Um, the reason is because uh, if somebody types in something like shoes into Google, it's not clear whether they're, if they want men's shoes, women's shoes, kids' shoes, brown shoes, black shoes, you know, there's just, um, it's not clear what their intention is. So although there's huge amount of volume and competition, the, uh, the conversion rates are, are not that good. Anyway, we're probably never going to be able to rank for something like that. So what we want to focus on are keywords called body keywords. And in the graph, this is, you know, the body part of the graph. Usually these are two to three word phrases, something like men's shoes. And um, not as much search volume, but um, a lower amount of competition and probably a higher probability of conversion because um, it's more specific men's shoes. It's more clear what their intention is. And um, if that, that keyword's on your page, then more, a higher chance that they're gonna convert. So the final type of um, keywords and keywords that we wanna look at as well are long tail keywords. So the long tail is the long tail of the graph here, not as much volume a lot of very you know individual searches um but they make up you know 60 to 70 percent of the total searches um for that particular niche so what we want to do is target the less competitive body and long tail keywords and we can do that either as a single term or we can try and get a portfolio of keywords. So 
you might be able to rank number one for five or ten different keywords and uh, the volume individually could be small but as a whole that could even outweigh the search volume for the most competitive terms so those are really the, the strategies that we're going after in terms of our whole SEO strategy and the keywords that we want to look for in our keyword research. Welcome back to the course. So in this lecture, what I want to do is introduce you to the Google Keyword Planner tool. Essentially, this is a free tool that's going to give us almost all of the information we need to make informed decisions about which keywords are best for our business. So really, we just want to go over there and I'm going to get you orientated, show you the different features. Keep in mind that this tool was built for AdWords and paid search. So there's some features there that aren't going to be relevant to us and I'm going to point them out. Great, so step one to using the Google Keyword Planner tool is to get access to it. And in order to do that, you have to set up a Google AdWords account. Again, that's free. And uh, in order to find it, you can just type in the Google Keyword Planner into Google and it'll pop up. Just follow the prompts and uh, set it up. The only thing that I would point out is be careful when you're choosing your currency because you can't change it once it's set. So don't make the mistake like I did. I set up my AdWords account when I was abroad and uh, it set it up kind of automatically in the, in the currency that I was in and I didn't change it. And so I had to set up a new AdWords account if I wanted to see it in a currency that I'm more familiar with. So I just set it up again in USD. I think that's probably the best, um, you know, especially if you're selling to a global audience. It's just a good reference point to have. But perhaps if you're a local business, you can just have it um, in the currency of your particular country. So once you sign into AdWords, you're going to see this screen and then you can just go to Tools and Keyword Planner. And what you're going to be presented with here is four different options. Three of them are really relevant to us. Um, the one that isn't relevant is Get Traffic Forecasts for a list of keywords. That's a feature that's specific to AdWords and uh, people who want to advertise with AdWords. So let's have a look at the first one. And really, we just want to get orientated here um, and just get a bit of an overview of what everything is. So here is where you can really enter in specific keywords. And what I recommend doing is maybe putting in one to three. Try and be specific. If you put in something very broad like cars, all you're going to see is really competitive uh, keywords for that. So you want to try and make it uh, specific and essentially what you think people will be typing into Google. So another way to generate ideas is to put in your home page uh, or a specific web page or a blog article that you have and um, that will really throw up ideas for you. You know a great way to use this section is to put in a high ranking competitor and see what keywords people are typing in to really land on that page. Another thing you can do is um, use this product category section so this will pull keywords from Google's uh, database um, and you can narrow it down quite a lot just to say consumer electronics say GPS navigation GPS, GPS devices so that's just an example but it shows you how deep you can kind of go into it if you want great so once you have filled in one or all three of these sections what you can do then is move on to targeting and you can target it by location and language um, and if you want to uh, just on Google or Google and the search partners so that's its display network including YouTube so I mean locations you can get quite deep into it as well you can then um, do specific countries or specific regions and then language say if you wanted to target um, say Brazil then you can just put in Brazil there and, and Portuguese so there's also options to customize your search so you can uh, if you want to do average monthly searches they say above a thousand searches you can put it in there or say below 10,000 you can put it in there as well suggested bid is again 
this is something that gives an indication of um, how well these keywords converse. So you might want to put it a suggested bid above, say, one or two dollars. Um, and then competition, high, medium, low. Let's go into that a little, a little bit more detail and then you can come back and change those settings if you want. Keyword options as well. I'd be inclined to just leave these all off, but you can maybe narrow it down if you're finding that your search is uh, just too, too many unrelated keywords. Great, so we've just finished then the orientation of the first uh, option within the Keyword Planner tool. Let's just quickly review the two other options and uh, we'll be able to get to, through these a lot quicker. This is uh, the option to get search volume for a list of keywords. So this is really a list of keywords that you already have and then you want to determine the actual search volumes for them. So all you need to do is choose the file and upload it there. And again, you've got some of the options there for targeting. Great, so let's look at the final option, which is multiple keyword lists. Uh, this is probably the one I use uh, less frequently, but it can be great for e-commerce because it really allows you to mash up a lot of different words and get a lot of different combinations. So what I've done in this example here is just really put in a couple of different colors, a couple of different brands, and a couple of different products that they make. And really what we want to see is what combination of those has the highest search volume. So uh, let's have a look. So red Nike sneakers has the uh, highest monthly searches uh, in all locations, which is 390. Red Nike shorts as well, 390. And as we move down, we can see the least popular for average monthly searches is uh, is well it goes down to gray puma hoodies which gets less than 10 searches a month that's what that means if that's uh, blank like that so great that really wraps up our introduction and orientation to the keyword planner tool great so welcome to the on page optimization section of the course now that we've chosen our keywords what we want to do is place those keywords on our web pages in the places that search engines are looking for them. If we do this, the search engines are going to index our web pages a lot more accurately, and as a result, we have a much better chance of appearing at the top of the search results for those particular terms. So as well as keyword placement, we're going to look at some of the other factors that are important for on-page optimization. And so by the end of this section, you'll understand the anatomy of a perfectly optimized page and you can use this as a blueprint going forward. Just remember that this section is called on-page optimization, not just on website optimization. So this is a process and a blueprint that you're going to follow for every new page that you publish, whether it be your home page, landing page, blog posts. This is a process that you're going to continually use over and over on an individual page basis. So the first part of on-page optimization that we want to look at is URL optimization. And really, I guess, the, the message here is that search engines treat URLs the way that real humans would. So essentially, you want to make them readable, you want to make them keyword rich, and you want to make them short. So as I said, you want to make them readable. So you want to avoid something like yourdomain.com forward slash p equals one two three neither the search engines or a real human can really understand what your page is, is about if your URL is like that what you really want to have is yourdomain.com forward slash you know whatever keyword you're targeting for that particular page you know what you want to avoid is something that's you know you maybe you have your keyword there but you include the full post title in the URL itself, it's just a little bit too long, and plus the um, search engines only will really look at the uh, first three to five words in the URL. Just another thing to avoid as well is make sure that your URLs and the, the words that are in the URLs are separated using hyphens. So as you can see here, a keyword hyphen or target hyphen keyword hyphen. That's the format you want. You don't want to have URLs uh, with underscores. I'll show you an example of how you can edit your uh, URL 
um, and I'm just going to do this in the admin panel of a demo WordPress site. Essentially, you're going to be able to make these same changes in whatever website builder you're using. But let's say my title of the article I want to publish here is about URL optimization. And as you can see, by default, it's pulled the URL from the, uh, the post title. So you can see that there's hyphens separating the words, which is great. It's got my keyword at the start of the uh, URL as well, which is perfect. And if I want as well, you know, I can shorten it down if I've quite a long post title, just down to the core keyword itself. That makes it a little bit easier, you know, if you're posting it across social networks, want people to link to it, and um, that they won't have to shorten uh, your URL using a tool like Bitly, etc. So that can be a good thing to do as well. So in this lecture, we want to have a look at the title tag and meta description, understand what they are, how you can change them, and how they give your SEO a boost. So to really understand the title tag and meta description better, let's have a look at a couple of real examples. So as you can see, I've typed into the search box home insurance here. And the first result that's come up is from this uh, website, 123.ie, an insurance company here in Ireland. So just a reference back to our previous lecture about URL optimization, you can see that it's 123.ie forward slash their target keyword, which is home insurance. So top marks to them there. But we really want to look at in this lecture, the title tag, which is this uh, here, and then this is called the search snippet, and really Google pulled this from two places, either one from your copy, or if you set a meta description tag, they'll usually use that. So let's, um, the title tag is really the most important uh, on-page SEO factor. So there's a couple of things that you really wanna keep in mind um, when you're writing this. First thing is that you wanna front load your keyword in the title tag like they've done here. So you can see home insurance is at the very start of the title tag. Uh, what you also wanna keep in mind secondly is to keep it you know, 55 characters or under, otherwise it's gonna be cut off and won't appear in the search results. So you can see here they've kept it short, whereas here uh, it's being cut off because it's uh, obviously a bit too long. So make sure all your message is in 55 characters and under. And then finally, you just wanna make sure that um, you have a, a different title tag for every page on your website or specifically the ones that you're gonna rank for because if it's the most SEO, or if it's the most important on-page factor and you haven't thought about it and changed it, tailored it to the page, well then, it's obviously going to affect your rankings. So just finally on the title tag, the other place it appears is in the, um, the tab of the browser. And I guess that's good when people have a lot of browsers over to, to click back to your page. So let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the meta description now. And there's a couple of tips that I have for you on this as well. So firstly, you want to include action oriented language so you can see here that they've done very well and they're saying protect your home so there there's a call to action there no other words and verbs that you could use for call to action there are things like learn grab discover and um, there are other things you can do and obviously uh, they've done that well here not as well maybe here you know home insurance here they've done a better get 60 euro off not as well here compare cheap home insurance they've done it better there okay so the second thing about meta descriptions what you want to keep in mind is you know you want to offer a solution or you know to whatever the person is searching for so you know they've done it here uh, protect your home insurance you can count on see how you can save with a quick online quote so that's pretty good see how you can save it's quick it's online it's a quote so um, that is a good you know, way to entice people, engage them. Obviously, people are reviewing these before they click through. So it's important to think about how you are presenting 
that you're going to solve their problems. So the other thing to think about as well is the length of it. You want to keep it uh, under or 155 characters and under otherwise it's going to be cut off. So you can see here that they've done well there. Again here it's too long so it's being cut off and um, so really there could be something important at the back there but I'm not going to see it. Include your keywords as well in the meta description so they've got home insurance, home insurance, you know home insurance here as well and um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. So really you know that's the the title tag how to write it that's the meta tag how to write it just remember you know don't forget your keyword research the keyword research is really going to feed into this as well obviously you like front load your keyword there and put it throughout and synonyms in the meta description as well don't stuff your keyword in there because obviously it doesn't look natural to users um, and they won't click through if it looks spammy let's return to my example uh, wordpress page that i'm publishing just so we're clear on how to write the, the title tag and the meta description um, so really in order to help with this as well what I'd suggest is that you download a WordPress plugin that's called WordPress SEO by Zoast. And the way that you find this and install it is really go to plugins, add new and you can search for WordPress SEO by Zoast and install it. Once you've got it installed this is really what it's going to appear like at the bottom of your page. And so you can see that the SEO title it's really been pulled from the title that I've typed in there. Um, so that seems good and in the right amount of length. Then the meta description, you can also type that in here as well. And they've got 49 characters left. So obviously I could flesh that out and work on it a little bit more. But as you can see, I've started with an action word and it's including my keywords as well. So this is roughly what it's going to appear like in the, the search results. Um, what's also cool about this tool is that it does a little check for you against the keyword that you're trying to rank for. So we can see that you know it's in the page title, it's in the URL, it's in the meta description. Um, so that's all extremely positive. It's obviously not in the content yet because uh, I haven't written any content yet. But that we're off to a great start in terms of our on-page optimization. So now that we've covered on-page optimization, we want to move on and focus on off-page optimization and in particular building powerful backlinks for your site. So if you remember in a previous lecture, I explained that Google sees a link to your site as a sort of vote of confidence, a vote of confidence that your content is great, that you're an authority on a particular subject, that you're a trusted entity in this space. And really, it's, it, Google takes all those links, they look at them, and they say, well, if everybody's linking to them, they must be great. And as a result, they rank you a lot higher in the search engine results. What's crucial to remember is that not all backlinks are created equal. And because we want to really focus on the most powerful quality backlinks, in this lecture, I wanted to talk a little bit about the types of links that really matter and at a high level, what are the strategies that you can use to get these. So now let's talk about the characteristics of powerful backlinks. And these are the links that really matter. So the first characteristic is that the link comes from web pages that are relevant to your niche. So Google's pretty smart at understanding the content of a web page and a website and what it's about. And what they really like to see is links from web pages that are relevant to your niche. So let's say for example you have a site that's about drones and you get a link from a site that's about something completely different like babies or cars. Well Google's not going to give that as much as importance as if a link from another site that's related to drones and in the same area as you because obviously the site that's about drones is a better authority on determining if your content is good, if it's relevant, if it's better than anything else out there. And that's why they give more weight to a link from a relevant web page to the one to the niche that you're in. 
So the second characteristic of a powerful backlink is one that comes from a ranking web page. Obviously, a vote that comes from somebody who's already got a lot of authority is a great indication that your content is good. And this is why it's so important to try and target web pages that have authority, that are in your niche, and get links from them. Now, the third characteristic of a powerful backlink is one that uses anchor text effectively. So I've spoken about anchor text before. Really, that's just the text that the hyperlink is contained within. So here's an example. I've got click here. That's the anchor text. And then I've just got google.com. That's the link in there. So really, the reason that anchor text is so important is because Google sees this as an indication of what your site is really about. So instead of just having uh, anchor text like click here, what we really want to try and encourage is to have our keywords in the backlinks that people are linking back to our site. And that really gives Google a good indication of what our site is about. When they see that our sites say about drones and they see the anchor text that says drones, and obviously the rank is a lot higher. Now, it's very important to remember that to look natural, we don't want to have every backlink pointing to us saying drones. You want to mix it up, make it look natural. Um, so you might have drones, you might have your brand name, you might sometimes have click here, you'll have synonyms for drones. Um, that looks natural and that's what Google wants to see, but it's just important to know about anchor text and then try and encourage it to use your brand name or keywords so you can rank for all of those terms. So the final characteristic of powerful backlinks are ones that are consistently being built. This looks organic to the search engines, like you're growing, that your business is getting better. So it's important not just to build a load of backlinks in one month and have none the next month. What's better really is to get a handful of backlinks every month and grow like that. That looks natural and that's what the search engines want to see. So really to sum it up, we want to focus on quality links. We don't want to focus on just low quality um, loads of links. Really what's effective is honing in and trying to get links that are following these characteristics. So now that we know the types of links that really matter, let's have a look at how do we get these links. And you know, earning them naturally is really the best way. So you should view link building as really a byproduct of building something that's genuinely worth linking to, whether it's your products, your services, the content that you produce, or the opinions that you share with your industry and peers. So this is this type of link is known as an editorial link, and it's really where somebody places a link within the body of a content, um, and it's it's kind of specifying a resource. So I'm sure if you've ever written a blog post, you've naturally linked off to something great you found, or even if you've ever written an email and you've linked off to some great resource that you say to somebody, you should check this out. So it's really a, a form of citation on the web, um, and it generally just indicates that the destination of the link is the original source of the, the data, the idea, the concept, or this statement. So this is very natural. I'm sure you've done it yourself. And so this is the best type of way to get links. So the second way to get links is to do manual outreach. And literally this is actually emailing bloggers and webmasters and asking for links. Now I see this really as a supporting activity to the natural way of getting backlinks, which really is creating something uh, really great that people naturally link to. But sometimes you need to develop the link opportunities, you need to draw their attention to your new content, and you really want to maximize the links for your content campaigns. So this is not something that's kind of dodgy. I think if you really create a very good value proposition to, by explaining to them why the link target is so good and why creating links is in their best interest. So later on in the course, um, I'm going to show you a couple of strategies about how to do this. 
in a very effective way that's beneficial for both you and the person linking to you. Okay, great, and that concludes this lecture. I know that was kind of high-level stuff, um, but I think it's really important to set the context of what we're really going after here because these are the uh, strategies that we're going to be pursuing in the next section, these type of strategies to build powerful backlinks from sites that are within our niche and on a consistent basis as well. So um, really important to take the time to lay that out and now let's move forward to some other clarifications in our link building introduction section. So in the last lecture we talked about the best ways to build links for your site but there is another way and it's actually paying for the links. So I just wanted to call this out separately on a lecture and discuss it a little bit because it may be something that you've seen, heard about and so let's explain a little bit more about this. Paying for li links really comes under the heading of Black Hat SEO and Black Hat is a reference to the old cowboy movies where the bad guy wore the black hat. So you probably get a sense that this is something a little bit risky that's not playing by the rules exactly. Um, so let's talk about paying for links a little bit more. The first thing to note is that uh, generally when you're paying for links you can go onto a freelancing site, you're paying maybe five or ten dollars and really what those people are doing are creating links generally through things like blog comments, form signatures, pure directories, user profiles and other types of directories. Now the thing is that generally these links offer the lowest amount of value, this, the lowest amount of power in these links because they're unlikely to come from authority sites and they're unlikely to come from sites that are within your niche. So if you remember those were the characteristics of some of the uh, of powerful backlinks. So the other very important thing to consider and this is really where the risk comes in is that recent updates to Google's algorithm means that a site can be penalized or suppressed if they have engaged in manipulative link building. So this is a, a relatively new addition to Google's algorithm that they will actually negatively affect your your chances of ranking in the search engines if they determine that you have trying to manipulate uh, link building. So that's really the main risk about this method. Um, what I thought would be interesting is to maybe show you an example of where things can go wrong. And I had a client that had bought a, uh, a link building package from one of these freelancing sites and I'm going to show you that it's very obvious to anybody that this is very manipulative, looks very unnatural. So let's have a look at that. Great, so this is the uh, client that I was saying that had bought the backlinks package and this is just a screenshot because I didn't want to kind of show um, who it was. But essentially this is a, I've used a backlinks checker tool. It's called AH. Ahref Site Explorer. We're going to look at this how to check backlinks profile a bit more in more detail in a further lecture. But really important point here is that you can see that this looks very unnatural. They have almost no links, then a huge surge in a very short space of time, and then a lot of them have dropped off as as well. So you can see that a lot of the do follow links. These are the blue blue ones, the new links were then subsequently lost. Um, so it looks very unnatural um, and if we can see it so obviously like this in a backlinks checker tool you can be sure that Google uh, picked up on this as well. So another interesting point is when I did a pulled an SEO report for these guys I saw that the top five keywords on their site were Viagra Cialis, Levitra, these are all types of drugs I think. So obviously what happened is when the person who bought, when the, the guy who owns the site, he handed over the login details to the, the backlinks guy. What the guy actually did was then put, in, put a load of links on this guy's site pointing to all these other sites about Viagra etc. So the double whammy of confusing Google in terms of 
SEO on page optimization about what your site is about because they have all these new keywords in there plus as well the bad reputation that looks all these spammy sites pointing to you now so question is then how do you get rid of these um, links that are pointing you from around the internet in short it's a difficult and slow process you can use what's called the Google disavow tool which is in the Google webmasters tool um, where you basically say to Google these are all the links I want you to ignore them please because these are spammy etc but if you really want to be sure the only way to remove them is to actually do manual outreach and email the people where the sites who have these site the links pointing back to you and ask them to remove them so again a very tedious um, process um, that can take a lot of time so in short what I'm saying is that it's messy to clean up it's risky from a search engine perspective I'm not saying that buying links can't work I think it can in certain circumstances but I'm just showing you this is kind of worst case scenario what can happen so congratulations on reaching the end of the course I really want to thank you for your attention and I hope that this course has helped you better understand search engine optimization and in particular that you know how to find the right keywords for your site how to optimize around them and also learn some strategies for creating content that's going to attract links from the authority sites within your niche so if you have found the course helpful and you've learned a lot i'd really appreciate if you could give me a rating and a comment here on udemy of course if you have any questions or suggestions about how i can improve the course you can add a discussion i'm in the discussion forums almost every day so my final piece of advice would be that if you still find all of these SEO technicalities too much you can just buy ads if you want to get instantly to, to the top of the search engine results Google and the other search engines will be delighted to promote your site and feature you in the sponsored area on the search engine results page just remember that you're going to have to place your ads around certain keywords so perhaps review the keyword section of the site so that's really it guys don't forget to ask questions and write your reviews and thanks again for your attention